The next thing we are going to be getting to today uh, is... Hey everyone, uh, we're going to take a little side trip from my Corrado project and the Jetta project, and we're going to do something that seemingly is unrelated, but is surprisingly directly related to car stuff, and that is this golf cart project. Years ago, somebody, uh, well, I have not way back ago, somebody donated this golf cart to our church, which is wonderful, and it's just your basic 36 volt electric golf cart, and it, over time, started to lose its oomph, and wasn't able to get around for more than a few minutes before losing its charge. We had somebody else who loved golf carts, it was like their hobby, so they came in and reconditioned it, renovated, restored the golf cart, did a lot of work to it. It ran great for about a year, a year and a half. And lately we've noticed it's starting to wind down and it doesn't really hold the charge. And the charger itself has been making really funny noises. So uh, I, did, I did some electrical testing and found out that the charger had gone bad. Well, you know, it seems like, okay, great. We'll just get a new charger, plug it in, charge up the batteries and everything should be fine. However, when we tried to charge up the batteries, we found that they would not take a charge. So here's where it connects to a car project and we can dial it back to something that could actually help you out. Now let's say you've got your project car and you don't drive it very much and you haven't thought about taking the negative terminal off of the battery when it is parked and stored, which is really what you should do. Uh, you can get one of those easy off uh, battery cutoff switches that cuts the ground and just shut off the battery and that will prevent, as my uh, electrochemist friend Jessica says, the happy flow of electrons in your vehicle. You want to stop the happy flow of electrons or your battery will die. It'll deplete just sitting there. So unless you're unhooking your battery from the negative side somehow and preventing your battery from depleting, what you often might find with your project vehicle is you come, it's been a couple of months, you want to start it up and or else just click and nothing happens because the battery is totally dead. And you can often, if the battery is in decent shape, put it on a charger and trickle charge it back up to 100% and it should be fine. However, Batteries only take so much of that before the, the acid inside starts to complain. Uh, I will not go into the chemical, electrical reasons why that is. All I will say is it happens. But you can refresh your batteries. You can restore their function by adding new water to it. And it is not just as simple as pouring some distilled water into the battery. There is a process involved and you want to use uh, magnesium sulfate dissolved in distilled water at a particular percentage and uh, the, the ratio for those of you who want to do this is about eight cups of magnesium sulfate that is Epsom salt you can get at Walmart eight cups of it per one quart of distilled water and that'll give you a, a good mixture that will probably be enough for one battery. Now this golf cart has three batteries and they're big batteries. So I've doubled up the, the mixture and I've got a good amount of this, um, we'll just call it battery water. And uh, by the way, if you're doing that, there are a lot of YouTube videos on making this stuff. You want to heat the distilled water up, not quite to boiling, but heat it up on your stove. And when it's really hot, then the Epsom salt will dissolve in it really quickly. It'll take about a minute to stir it all in. And when you can see the water is clear and not cloudy, then you know it's all dissolved and you've got your solution that you need for this. If it's still cloudy, you need to keep stirring and keep it under heat. So back to this. We got three batteries. Each of them is a 12 volt battery and they are wired in series, which gives us a 36 volt system. 
So what I'm going to be doing is testing each of these 12 volt batteries, which are exactly the same as you would find in your project car at home, seeing what voltage they're at right now. I'm going to fill up the individual cells with this battery water mixture, and then we are going to put them on a charger and see if we can restore life back to these batteries. Now there's three of them. Now I could go about it one of three different ways. I could hook them all back up in series and use the golf cart charger and let them all charge at the same time and hope that they're all working great. And yeah, that could work. But let's say of the three batteries, two of them are able to take a charge and one of them does not. Well, the system will never come up to full charge the charger will continue pumping juice through the whole system and what we could end up doing is electrolyzing the two good batteries and ruining them. So rather than that, we are going to charge each battery individually and then test them and see if they're all back up to function and then I will hook them back up in series and hopefully we'll have a functional golf cart at the end of this. Now the reason I'm sharing this of course is because these are the same steps you can do with your project car battery at home. So if you found that you have killed your battery and it doesn't want to come back up to a full charge even though you put it on a trickle charger, then you can dispose of the, the water that's in that battery and add this new solution and charge it back up and I would say you have a fairly high percentage of restoring function to your battery. It is possible there is internal damage that the plates inside have um, deteriorated and they will not accept a full charge, but I know that these batteries in here are fairly fresh, and if, I think for most people dealing with a project car, you've got a fairly fresh battery. You've gone down to AutoZone or O'Reilly's or Pet Boys or Walmart or whoever and gotten your battery and you put it in the car and two years later it's just out of warranty but it's still a fresh battery and it's not holding a charge and you are faced with the the choice of going and spending another hundred bucks or so to get your new battery and maybe they'll be nice and they'll prorate the old one and give you a little bit of credit but you know, still a good chunk of change or you can spend eight dollars on some Epsom salt and some distilled water and mix this stuff up and give it a try so that's what we're gonna do today let me show you what we got going on here inside this golf cart we've got three batteries each of them is a 12 volt battery. I've already removed the caps from this one and each of these cells holds your sulfuric acid mixture which is what happens to the distilled water and the magnesium sulfate over time. It, it goes through a chemical process and it becomes acid. So they're all low. They, they should have it just coming up to the, the edge, just to the lip of each of these cells and they're very very low uh, so we're gonna go ahead and put some new material some new stuff in it and I am gonna take off the caps on these other batteries and we'll do the same thing so why don't we start with that the other thing we're gonna do is before before I start adding anything I'm gonna take my multimeter and I'm gonna measure the voltage of all of these batteries just to see what we're starting off with and then after we add the water and charge them then we'll have a reference to see if we were successful or not. Now I've already unhooked the cables from these batteries they're not connected to one another and they're not connected to the golf cart if you're working on your battery in your vehicle you do want to at least disconnect the negative side so that you don't run the risk of electrocuting yourself because that's a bad day or hurting anything in your car electrically because that also is a bad day uh, some people ha are of the impression that you can remove the positive side but I always go by the recommendation of some of my electrical engineer friends that have told me about how these systems work. Now if you've got a 1946 hot rod, it's probably not going to hurt it to take the electrical side off before the, the negatives, or the positive before the negative. But on a modern system that is controlled by a microcomputer, ECU, there are some things that can get damaged by connecting positive to the system rather than negative. You can short out some of the, uh, the electronic components and you know yeah 
with a lot of cars you can probably find a, a new computer in the junkyard for a couple hundred bucks but still that's a couple hundred bucks you shouldn't have to spend and as long as you unhook the negative side first actually the negative sides here on this battery this is positive as long as you unhook the negative side of your battery first then it's safe you're not running the risk of uh, damaging your electric components that might get shorted by the current being um, quickly introduced in the wrong direction uh, most cars do not have a protective circuit or a diode uh, because of the way that their ECUs are on the back side of a relay that provides them with power now if you're providing power you're back feeding on the other side of the relay um, it, it just bypasses all the filtration that could be happening there and there are other other reasons again I'm not going to go into it but I've had it explained to me by my uh, electrical engineer friends and I trust them so this one is a little bit low this one is a little bit low all three batteries are a little bit low let's go ahead and measure the voltage and see what we have here so handy dandy multimeter and let's see what, what we have So this one's supposed to be 12 volts. It's putting out 6.28 volts. Yeah, that's a little on the low side. And I'm dropping my caps, which is very helpful. So let me uh, pick up the cap that I dropped. Let's go over to our next customer here and see what we get. So here we have Positive on this side, negative on this side, and we've got 2.1 volts. All right, that one is fantastic. And on our third battery, we have, let's see what you're going to give me here. It's positive, it's negative. Four volts. So they're all super, super low compared to what they ought to be. Now, one, um, one approach to this is to remove the battery and dump out all of the old fluid and replace it completely. That's probably what gives you best possible results, as I've seen in other videos. So that is the approach we are going to take here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these batteries, go dispose of the acid, and then we will fill them with fresh battery water. I may actually need to make some more battery, battery water to have enough for all of these batteries. So we'll see how far my, I, I made two quarts worth. I don't know what the capacity is here, but we'll just start with one battery and go from there. All right, so. We've got a few of these uh, things of distilled water, magnesium sulfate mix made up, adding it to the cells and the batteries. As soon as I fill these all up, then we'll go ahead and put them on a slow charger and see what happens. Hey again everyone all right so we have uh, in terms of the battery thing with the golf cart we've we've made our special replacement distilled water magnesium sulfate mix we've filled up the batteries we've got them on trickle chargers and we're gonna leave them overnight to see how they do come back and I'll measure the voltage tomorrow to see if we do have any new life in these batteries now they're all reading really low like the the strongest one was six volts so they might just be gone they might be done so if that's the case that's the case but at least we tried and it, again it only cost me eight bucks for the salt so no biggie 
on to other things. Uh, I want to make a mention, if you are, like many of us are, a user of Harbor Freight Tools, you may want to check the part numbers on your three-ton jacks. Hold on a sec. So that's right, if you've got one of these Pittsburgh three-ton jacks, there are a couple of specific part numbers that are under a recall right now for safety. They could collapse. That'd be a bad day for everybody, right? So a bad day for you, bad day for your car, bad day for your loved ones. Not a pleasant day for emergency services either. So check the part number. They all have a part number listed on them. Uh, the little yellow label down here, and that will tell you whether or not yours is one of the affected parts. Now I've got three sets of these jack stands that I use here and none of them are affected part numbers and I double checked to see what it was was the def defect um, that they've shown online as well and none of my parts have that defect so even if it didn't have the right part number you know I'm not going to stand by just a plastic label to make sure that the thing isn't going to collapse on me but I'm in good shape my jack stands are fine but please check yours and if you have any question about which part numbers are being recalled they are on the Harbor Freight Tools website, or you can just Google Harbor Freight Tools Jack Stand Recall, where you can Google Harbor Freight Tools NHTSA, that's the National Highway Traffic uh, Safety Administration. So that's a recall, it's out there. They'll give you full credit for it, uh, or swap you across for a non-recalled part number. So go take care of that if you have these jack stands, be safe. Another thing I wanted to mention, if, uh, if you are a car enthusiast and you, you may want to have an illustration of your car done by really high quality artists and in a fun way, check out ForgedRides.com. They're uh, a website where you upload a picture of your car and they will turn it into a high quality illustration at a pretty minimal price and then you can print that on anything. I mean, you can have posters printed of it. I had a poster made of my car. They're also the ones who did my Cliff Jumper Cars logo. So thank you, uh, Forged Rides, for that. Of course, I paid them to do that, so it's not like... Anyway, I appreciate their work. And if you use this discount code, which I'm going to put here in the bottom, and I'm also going to throw in the description, you can get 20% off anything that you order from them. So that's a super good deal. Highly recommend it. Head on over there and check it out.